stuff. You know, the only problem with these sunglasses, I can't see a thing without my regular glasses. We got a segment coming up on these. Warby Parker. All right, all right. But for now, I got to put these on to read the copy. <laughs> Following earlier gains on upbeat housing data, the Dow and the S&P 500 fell for a fourth day in a row on taper worries sparked by stronger than expected private sector growth and in jobs, and that is good. But should investors actually be on the lookout for a continued rally ahead of the Christmas season and then beyond into the new year? Joining us now, InvestorPlace.com editor Jeff Reeves, not wearing his red Santa hat, but certainly <laughs> feeling the holiday season, right? I mean, you're, you're feeling quite optimistic. Is this all Fed-driven, or please tell me there's something else? <laughs> Well, you know, I think there is some seasonality going here, but the economic data is good, as we just saw with the ADP report. I mean, it's, it's true that the market has pulled back for four sessions now. Maybe there was a little bit too much trip to fan in the turkey. Investors <laughs> took a little nap, but I think people are ready to get back in the saddle. I mean, the, you know, there is always nuance. There's always risk. You need to be responsible. But if, if you're asking me whether or not get in or get out, I say get in. I think now is a great time to invest. I think the rally is going to have a lot of strength in the next 30 to 45 days, particularly because of the, the strength of December broadly, but also because I think a lot of the indicators are pointing up specifically right now at this moment in time. But Jeff, if the indicators are good, the chance of an earlier taper by the Fed is also good, and that's why interest rates spiked today. I say spiked. They weren't up tremendously, but a, a six basis point uh, gain was, was worrisome to, to investors, at, at, at least for the most part of today. So isn't that a concern to you, that interest rates are going to go up? Uh, well, I, I believe there's a kind of a, a disconnect between with what in investors think is going to happen and what actually will happen. As we saw in November, there was a pretty big rally. Janet Yellen took the stand in front of Congress, basically said that she was going to be accommodative and that policy at the Fed was going to be easy even after some of the benchmarks are hit. Now, those are her words. So, granted, I, I know the whole good news is bad news because it might be the end of taper, but nobody is saying that maybe sometime in January we're going to see uh, the, the Fed funds rate is going to be raised by a full one percentage no, but, point. But, but, but we're going to see is that zero. rates are rising irregardless of what the Fed is doing, or at least just with the suggestion that the Fed might taper? Well, that's true, but that also happened earlier this year. We did see kind of a rise across the summer, and it's true that long-term bond funds did take a hit, but as we've seen across 2013, there really didn't, didn't see like a rotation out of the stock market. Okay. I mean, that's one of the important things to remember is people talk about the great rotation, a great line I read this week. We're actually seeing a great flotation with everything. <laughs> I mean, there is kind of a, an importance for the bond market, but I don't think that detracts away from the strength we're seeing in stocks right now. Gotcha. With multiple expansion, investor inflows, I think that there's an important story there separate from the narrative about well, bonds what, what and tapering. Will float a little bit higher. You don't just buy every sector, correct? Which sectors do you really feel are the ones to salt the money in right now? Right. Well, you know, if, if we want to talk about nuance, I do think the market in general is going to go up, but I think people do need to be selective, a little more responsible. Tech, I think, is a little bit frothy, as we saw with the Twitter IPO. Valuations are really high. They're stretched. You know, I, I think it, it's prudent to look at a sector that I think it gives you the best of both worlds. If things don't go off to the races, you still have a decent dividend and long-term potential. I like chemicals a lot. Um, a smaller company, Huntsman, actually trades for a very attractive PE right now, about 10. Um, it doesn't have as a big of a dividend, but it's got strong dividend growth, and it's got good upside potential after it restructured during the Great Recession. Session. Or you can go with the big guys like Dow Chemical or DuPont, I think also offer a good dividend, good dividend. They have stability. And if we do see a cyclical recovery, do we continue to see this economic uptrend? Chemical stocks are incredibly unsexy. They make dyes and you know chemicals for the automotive industry. But as the economy recovers, these guys are going to have more customers, bigger sales, bigger dividends. I think this is a good place to be. It's, it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's a little bit defensive, but it also gives you upside if the economy continues to hum along, as I, as I, I think it should in the next three to, to six months. You think tech stocks are generally overbought and you're not alone there but but there are some bets in fact we just put up a spider fund are there any solid bets in tech or has everything been bought well, I do think that, you know, broadly, if the, if the market continues to rally, I think there is the opportunity to slip some jabs on a buyback. I mean, I'm not buying HP now, but I'm looking at, at that as one of these companies that has perhaps been eclipsed by some of the, the red hot runs we've seen in Facebook, which has started to pull back, and then Twitter after its IPO. So I do think you can kind of look at big tech again. Enterprise spending has been soft, but if you want to look at where the money is going to go, maybe a company like Oracle or IBM is actually going to have a good 2014, because let's be realistic, I don't think Facebook's going to have another 60% in the next six months. You saw new home sales today. They really hit it out of the ballpark. Best in several years, at least that kind of jump. Do you feel any particular way either about the home builders or home materials, which we were talking about yesterday because lumber was dropping in price? 
I do like builders a little bit, but I'll tell you kind of an odd play on housing if you want to do it. I'm really bullish on auto stocks. I've been bullish on auto stocks this year, and okay. I'm bullish on auto stocks next year, mostly because of the pickup sales. There's a big redesign of pickups uh, for GM and Ford this year. Uh, GM is doing another uh, relaunch in 2015 with its heavy-duty line, yeah. and it, it's, it's a little bit of a stretch, but if you think about it, these kind of working jobs, not like office jobs like you and, my, you and me who sit in front of a computer, but people who actually have a truck for work, there is actually business there again for these people, and they're seeing a much more activity whether you're, you're doing tile for people's bathrooms or you're doing flooring. Mm -hmm. uh, there is demand there. They haven't really redesigned GM or Ford trucks in a while. So I think that these are high margin items for, for GM and Ford to sell. I think they're going to see big domestic demand as a contractor business recovers. Okay. So not a direct play per se, but I really like autos generally, and I think that's one kind of leg of the stool on why you should look at GM or Ford. InvestorPlace.com editor Jeff Reeves. Jeff, great to see you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Great to see you too, guys.